called them all by name, just in case you didn't know he was a big deal. Great is our Lord and of great power. His understanding is infinite. He knows your heart. He knows what it takes to heal it. He knows what it takes to suture it up. It's wise. Buddy, he knows. Knows how to get you back where he was, brother. He knows how to do it. The Lord lifted up the meek. The Lord lifteth up the meek. The wicked. He cast it down to the ground. What does it mean to be meek? Does it mean like this? Meek is sheep. Sheep is sheep. So what is meek? You ever really think the definition of that word? I'm going to give you a country term. I'll give you a country definition of it. It's when you know you can't help yourself. It's when you know you can't do nothing for yourself. That's what it means to be meek. Blessed are those who don't know how to fix themselves for they shall have the kingdom. Remember the old saying, God helps those that help themselves? Hogwash. God helps them that can't do nothing about it. God helps, God helps the sick. He helps the sick. When you come to the well. Just like I said about the old mechanics. The old mechanics, they don't want everybody to have a new car. If they did, they wouldn't have no work. And Jesus Christ came to this earth to bind up the brokenhearted and to release the prisoners. This is still his work. This is still what he comes to do. This is still his policy. Still implemented through his church. What is a church supposed to be? A spiritual hospital. Where sick people come, Michael. Where people that have broken hearts that just can't fix themselves. And he takes out the big spiritual needle and he sutures that heart. How does he do it? I cannot. Any more than I can tell how the wind blows. But he does it. And he does it when you believe that word, spoken word, that promise goes out. It goes out from the belly of the creature, and it's believed in the heart of the recipient, and then something's done. That's, right. That's what the apostle called it. He said, that word which we preach, mm -hmm. that word of faith that comes out from the heart of God and comes through the belly of his servant. Out to the people. You see why there's no one getting healed in the church? Because ain't nobody got it in their belly, JC. Ain't nobody got the word of God inside of them. They know how to repeat it. They've been taught how to speak it. They've been taught in seminaries and cemeteries how to speak the word of God. But it doesn't come out from nowhere. It don't come out from the divine place. Therefore, there's no healing in it. Look at the seven sons of Sceva in the book of Acts. It's not enough just to use the name of Jesus. There has to be something behind it. Mm -hmm. Do you know that? The seven sons of Sceva tried to cast out a demon, a bunch of demons out of that one guy, and he beat them up and run them all out, seven people, J.C. And you know what they did? They said, in the name of Paul, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, come out. You know what they said? You ain't got no backing in this. You ain't got no law or matter in this. You ain't been crucified yet. You ain't been brought to nothing yourself. And you're coming in here trying to kick these demons out in the name of Jesus, whom somebody else preaches? The keys wasn't given to them yet. Do you see it? It ain't just the name. It 
distinct confession, it's a possession. This is what I have against the sinner's prayer for me. Because it's just thrown out there. Repeat after me, repeat after me. Yes, if Jesus rose from the dead, yes, Jesus rose from the dead, blah, 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 blah. And it doesn't save nobody any more than it saved last year's birth net. You know why? Because it ain't in words. It's in power. It doesn't come by might. and It doesn't come by ingenuity of the mind. Let me try to talk you into this. It comes through the Spirit. It comes from the heart of God, through the belly of the evangelist, or the prophet, or the teacher, or the apostle, or the pastor, or whoever. When the Holy Ghost is moving in a person speaking the gospel, in those words is the faith needed to heal the heart. It's the word of faith which we preach. You see that. It's not just the words. It's the words of faith. something substantive back in the hearts of people. And then when they speak, they'll be like Samuel and their words won't fall to the ground. That's what they said about Samuel. Buddy. That his words never fell to the ground. You know why? Because he just didn't go out and run in his mouth. When he spoke, it was from God. So it hovered in the air. Oh, there's power in the words of God if they come from Him. You got to be back there, don't you? You got to be back there spiritually. Don't you dare go out there trying to cast out devils till you're told to do it. Don't do it. They'll rip your clothes off of you, send you, send you bleeding. Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving, sing praise unto the harp unto our God, who covereth the heaven with clouds, who prepareth rain for the earth, who maketh the grass to grow upon the mountains, he giveth to the beast his food, young ravens which cry, he delighteth not in the strength of the horse, he taketh not pleasure in the legs of a man, the Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him. What's the next one? And in those that hope in his mercy. Remember how I say it on the chat all the time? You've got one card for you, Karen. It's this card of mercy. But every one of us in here has to be exonerated by the blood of Jesus Christ. Every sin ever committed has to come under that fountain. If it's going to be exonerated, it don't matter if it was committed 30 years ago or it was committed 30 minutes ago. It's all got to go to the same place. And that is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilty stains. That's still the gospel. It's still the power of God unto salvation. Amen. And those that hope in His mercy, not sacrifice, but mercy. Do you know why religion misses it? I'll tell you why. Because they try to be good folks. Mm -hmm. and they try to bring something pleasing to God. What's the first thing you do when you trip and fall? You try to make up for it, don't you? You try to make up for it. You go get yourself a mop, and you try to clean it up, and you try to get rid of it, and then, well, nobody will see that I spilled that. See, that's sacrifice. And God can't do anything with it. Now, is there restitution? And there's things you got to do? You betcha. But you can't put your hope in that. You have to put your hope in the mercy. You see? The restitution comes out of that. If you use restitution as your penance, you miss it. 
follow me? You got to put all your hope into mercy. You can't put your hope into restitution. Just because you repent, that's not what makes you right with God. Now listen to me. It's not what you turn from, but it's what you turn to that matters. You turn from your sins, you got to turn to mercy. You can't turn to just making up for it. Now there's some stuff you got to do. There's some stuff you may have to reverse. There's some people you got to go tell some stuff to. But that's the result. That's the byproduct of hearing God. You see. But it's mercy that you need. That's the card you need, brother. You can't never make up for what you did. I can't never make up for my ten years of lousiness. I can't make up for it. Ten million years I would have. I couldn't make up for the disaster that I called my backslidden life. All the people that I put the gospel to shame. All the people that I put a reproach on. All the people that believed in something that I had, that I left. I cannot make up for that. I can't do it. If I try to do that, Courtney, I'll spend the rest of my life doing that and I'll never preach the gospel. Now there's some things. There's some things. There's bitternesses. There's restitution. There's some things you got to do. There's some things you may have to undo, but that ain't what saves you. You follow me? Right. The mercy. Right. Mercy. Mm-hmm. Good example. A guy murders somebody, he ends up on death row. He's going to pay society for that sin, isn't he? But let's say he gets converted while he's on death row. And God forgives him of that sin. May he still have to pay for that sin? For society? Absolutely. But God can forgive him, and his spirit can be as if it never happened. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that how powerful the gospel is to be able to do that? He may still have to go be executed for what he did. So there's still stuff that happens. There's still stuff that takes place. There's repercussions to our sins. And you can't get away from those. But thanks be unto God. Now there are people that when I lost out with God I greatly disappointed them Louisa. Many of them. And I can't touch them JC. Even in my restoration I cannot go back to them. That's not my harvest field anymore. I ruined that harvest field. That's a repercussion. I can't get that back. People that I may have had on the fence with the gospel that were looking in said, ah, I don't believe none of that because of what I did, Louisa. That's on me. I can't get rid of that. And I can't make up. For I could go win a million people and it wouldn't make up for that one soul that I caused to stumble. But I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven of that. Through the blood of Jesus, I'm forgiven of that. But the fact remains, you see. So what am I trying to say? Everything we do has an action and a reaction. Everything we do. You throw a rock in a pond, it's not just that. It has ripples. It goes out. (coughs) So what am I trying to say? Holy Ghost has to separate in you mercy from repercussion. You have to understand that. If you don't get that, you won't go nowhere. You just won't go nowhere. You have to understand that the ball may still be rolling and what you did, but 
God can have mercy on you. I'm going to show you right here in the book what I'm talking about. Go with me to 2 Samuel. I'll show you. It's a very important message for all of us. 2 Samuel chapter 11. I may keep you hostage a little bit tonight. You still love me, don't you? Hmm? Hmm. Do you still love me? All right. Maybe some of you didn't love me to begin with. <laughs> Second Samuel chapter 11. I'm going to read a lot, so stay with me, okay? After the year was expired at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbah, but David tarried still at Jerusalem. And it came to pass in an evening tide that David arose from his bed, walked upon the roof of the king's house, and from the roof, he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. Here we go. Now, now 